Hey guys, today we're going to explore another non-popular tool. You cannot see it very often during the tutorials. It's called color replacement tool and it will help us to recolor certain element in the picture without need for selection or masking. So it's one of those quick fix tools that people do not talk about very often because as you may guess, uh, teachers, people that make tutorials, they want to show you like the proper way, even though it's very often the, a bit slower way. But we should also know about those quick fix tools. Last time I showed you the, the patch tool and this and also the background eraser tool. And this is kind of similar thing. It's one of those quick fix tools we can apply, of course, as a magic kind of tool. It's may come with different results, depends on your image, but it's good to know that we got the option to at least try before we kind of start the precise selection. So let's get started. Here I am in Affinity Photo. It's version 2.2 .2 for the desktop. And I already load an image and there's a red car in the center of that image. Can we just use the recolor tool instead of selecting the red areas and then adjusting that later on. So can we do it without the selection and not destroy the backdrop color? All right. So let's just try. I will zoom in a bit. So comment plus on my keyboard. And if you zoom in already, but you want to move your camera around, just press and hold the space bar for the pan tool like that. All right. And let's search for the tool on the tool is on the left. Normally you will see this paint brush tool, the standard brush, right? Click and hold and that's just below it. Color replacement brush tool. Here it is. Now we can set up a new color. So let's say we want to turn this red car blue. All right. And as the name say, it's a brush tool. So we can actually give it a brush head. I will stick with something like semi blurry, maybe something like that. So I will set my hardness to like 50% flow 100 opacity 100 and adjust the size a bit. All right, maybe a bit larger. I don't want wet edges. All right. And we want opacity to be 100. It's already set. So let's take a look now. If I hover my brush above this red car, as you can see, it's trying to show me how the color will apply. And take a look. Even though half of the brush is touching the backdrop, it's not recoloring that. So that's the feature of the brush. This brush try to detect colors below and brush strokes as well. So edges and colors. This way he will try to protect the areas of different colors. So we cannot recolor the backdrop and the car same time. That's the property of this brush. So let's try to use it. As you can see, only part of this red color was changed. To speed up this process, we can bump the tolerance by default is 10%. We can add like maybe 10 more. Let's move it to 20%. We can also set up to sample constantly. This way we don't need to click and resample all the time. He will try to sample constantly why we are using the brush. It can be a bit dangerous, but it should speed up the process. All right, take a look. Let's do something risky. Let's move from this red to outside. And as you can see, because we sampling now, he just recolored the backdrop. So let's switch that off. And result is way better, right? So if you kind of going out of the color area, this sampling may be a risky maneuver. So as you can see right now, I just sample when I click for the first time. That's when the sample is made. This way I protecting the color to not leak out that much from this red area. But in that case, we got a car. So there's some kind of reflection on it. I will need to sample multiple times for different shades of red. 
or I can also bump up the tolerance even higher. There's no red color in the area, so we could risk that. So let's make it 30%. All right. As you can see, I'm working with really large brush and those spaces between brushing here, they are not nice. Take a look. That's something that I messed it up here. Can we fix that later? Let's try. All right. And another reason that this tool is not really popular, we cannot say it often when people are doing tutorials and try to show you different techniques, is because it's a destructive tool. So what I'm doing right now is to actually destroy the original image. So if tomorrow I change my mind and I already save it without a copy of the layer for the original image, I will need to redo the stuff again from scratch because I destroy the picture. All right, so that's destructive method. It's always advised to avoid destructive tools. But as I mentioned, they're pretty good for quick fixes. All right, so take a look. That's my result. Try to recolor the car without any prior selection. I think the background is not that distracted. I see some blue coming out a bit at the very top. But when I was brushing here, as you can see, those area between different brush strokes, when the program resample, they look desaturated. It's maybe caused because of my brush hardness is like 50%, but I really don't like that. And it seems like I cannot rebrush that. So that's really weird. I wonder if I simply go in history. So let's go back in the history, not the histogram, the history. I cannot see that window. In that case, I will go here and check that it's turned on. It's turned on. It's at the bottom in my case. Okay. And now we go back all the way back. And let's see that I was right. It's maybe caused by the brush hardness or oh, no. So let's try with the harder brush. And yeah, seems like the blurry edge of my brush cause of those different burnings. So seems like this tool is a bit better with actually sharp edges. So we don't need to be afraid of those sharp edges because the brush itself should help us to protect the surrounding areas. All right. So now it's way easier to resample. We getting way better result straight away. So that's something to remember. The soft brush or some weird texture on your brush may actually mess up the tool a bit. As you see, that happened to me just a moment ago. All right. So every time I click, I resample. So if this area skipped, you can click that area and you got new sample, new sample of red. All right. So like here, I can do that and then I can point to this shiny area and I can recolor that as well. All right, so I really like the settings. I think we picked like the perfect settings for this image. So we got 30% tolerance and 100% hardness. And I think we're getting way better result in the first try. So that's something to remember as well. With some of those tools, we just need to try some simple trials and errors will do. And as I mentioned, usually you do not recolor the whole objects like that. It's more like a quick fix tool. So we got one small element that we want to recolor without spending time on selection. All right. So that was our little car experiment. Let's use the very same tool with a nice white backdrop. As you know, white is a lack of color. So we got very high brightness, but no saturation on it. So it should be really easy to use this tool in that scenario. So let's turn this, this green apple into red apple, like orange red. And again, I will use simple brush with hardness 100%. We already learned our lesson. We don't want to mess up the hardness. We don't want those burn in marks between strokes when we resample. 
and let's try it out. I click inside, so I sample the green color, and then I will walk from inside all around and see what I can recolor in one stroke. All of that was recolor in just one stroke. You see, I'm popping out, but the color will not change because it's too different from the first color I click. So that's important while using this tool. What is the first color you click? All right. Seems like we're almost there. And here I will need to be really careful. So maybe let's zoom in a bit, increase the tolerance to 20% and a bit smaller brush so we can get those finishing touches here at the edge as well. This red appears a bit flat, but the original green was flat as well. It's about the lightning here, I think. Very sterile picture on the white backdrop. So there's nothing around this this object to reflect on it. Like they should put like some darker object maybe to make some reflections on it. All right, and now here we got the green area. We don't want to recolor in that case. In in this use scenario, I will just go with the smaller brush. What we can also do is we can actually select area that we don't want to recolor and inverse that. So what I mean is I will use the manual selection. So there's freehand selection that I can set up. And then I can make those selection lines around this area because I want to protect it. So I don't want to recolor this guy. So now that's selected, we need to flip that. So select and we want to invert pixel selection. And with that, we can go back to our tool and keep recoloring. And that selected area is protected now. Actually, everything else is selected except that area, technically. So that's how we can use selection to support our color replacement tool. And here it is. We recolor the apple without any a precise selection and masking. All right. And the last experiment that will be a really common use for this tool when we got very contrasting color like this yellow flower, that should be pretty easy to recolor. So let's try it out. Can we easily change the color of this yellow flower? Click and work in and out. We can try with the very first click to see as you can see I'm not precise at all. I'm not precise. All right. Then I click the darker shade of it. And I think 15% will be just a uh, good tolerance for this one. All right. If you want to resample simply click again different shade of yellow. So it can cover all of that. I got huge brush and I'm not precise at all. I let the brush do the job. So the main job of this brush is to protect the areas of different colors. So when I click the yellow, the brush will know I want to recolor only the yellow part. All right, let's zoom in here. See this shade of yellow, very bright one. Mm -hmm. All right, and now with the a bit smaller brush, I just resampling some areas with unusual shade of yellow. I could also bump up the tolerance. I got smaller brush now, so I don't need to worry about messing up the backdrop. If you got troubles, Clicking on the color, feel free to zoom in. As you can see, I need to actually select the color I mean, to be in the center of that brush for me to sample that well. Of course, we can turn on sample continuously right here. And if you are staying inside the shape, that's totally fine. Remember, I showed you that before. If you try to go on the backdrop, that will mess up the brush. But if you are staying inside that, we are on zoom now and we are not going out of this flower. That's going to be actually helpful for us. All right.
right so as you can see we got some strange shade here and it's really giving us trouble so let's bump up this tolerancy all the way up and now finally with tolerancy 50 percent i managed to get rid of that really irritating yellow color on most of it all right with this high tolerancy and sampling you must be careful about going out of the edges all right we don't want to recolor the center so let's reduce the tolerancy to maybe 40 percent and just a little fine details here and there most of the flower was covered in like the first two strokes now we're just going those finishing touches so it's kind of not a quick fix anymore if you're spending so much time with it i guess so let's just stop and see what's our result for this third picture let me just zoom out if you want to zoom out quickly to see like 100 percent of the image i recommend you guys to hit a uh, command or control zero this way you can jump back to a normal view all right so here it is i paint over this flower using this color replacement brush and we got kind of all right result i guess we could still work on it but if you plan to work on it for a long time don't use that brush you just do the proper selection and then you can recolor that from the selection itself so that's what i want to show you today it's called color replacement brush tool it's more like a brush so we can change the size hardness flow or even head of the brush and then while you're painting the brush will try to protect the colors other than the one you click first so in that case the green color around the flower is protected quite well no leaks around we try on this apple on the white color so there's no problem at all and with the car with the red car at first we got some troubles and after getting rid of the hardness that was set up to 50 percent so we got the blurry edge we got way better result so just trust in the tool put the hardness to 100 and trust that the tool will help you to protect the backdrop so that's one of those quick fix tools that not many people show around but if there's something that you need to recolor quickly in the image you don't have time for precise selection or skills or experience use this one recolor that little part and move forward with your project all right so thank you for today and i will see you in the next tutorial bye